thank you everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, meeting of the Waterbury Select Board of Monday, May the 16th, 2022. Um, I welcome everyone. I just wanna talk a little bit about, I know we've had kind of in the past, maybe some rules and guidelines to go by. Anyone who does have any questions or if they wanna speak, it should go through the chair. Uh, and the chair will, myself as the chair, will recognize those, those folks. Please try to be brief. Uh, we encourage uh, any kind of comments under two minutes. Also, if you're speaking in the public section, which will be uh, going over after approving the agenda and the consent agenda, uh, it should be something that's not being addressed under one of the other agenda items. So with that, uh, again, you know, trying to keep the meeting civil, trying to keep the meetings on time and running well, we'll live by those standards. So I thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Is there no changes or add-ons? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll move to approve the agenda. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? Can we put it in the chat? Because I know Bill wanted to add uh, a session, and we none of us know what executive session at the very end. So, if that's a friendly amendment to move, have executive session at the end, I don't know what exactly you know Bill's looking to discuss. Okay. If so, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. I could have a um, motion to approve the consent agenda items. So moved. Thank you. Se second. I'll awesome. second. Thank you. We have two seconds. Uh, any further discussions on the consent agenda? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Now is the point on the agenda where we uh, allow the public to speak. If anyone wishes to speak on something that's not on the agenda, uh, now is the time to speak. If, if you could come up, that'd be really helpful. Because that way the uh, owl will be good for all right, I just I have a few updates. I did share some information. Can you just take your name for the record? Uh, Tom, Tom Scribner. Thank you. Um, in terms of Hope Davy, it's now a part of the, it's in the Vermont Reptile and Amphibian Atlas for uh, certain species. And the vernal pools are also part of the vernal pool mapping project, which is done by the Vermont Center for Eco Studies and the agency uh, ANR, it's a joint venture project. And um, there's a number of, of uh, we, have, we have frogs, we have wood frogs, we have salamanders, we have spotted salamanders, and we have the wood turtle uh, down below West Garden's house. So this is actually a very appropriate night to be here because what's happening, it's just like flushing the toilet. Right from West Garden's house, right down over the bank, uh, 10 down, nine right to the stream. All of the sediment is going right down into Badger Brook. And the wood turtle in particular is very sensitive to sediment and water quality. So, and then the wood turtle is actually uh, disappearing because of human impact, which would include the gnolls, the fact that the gnolls you know, is there now. But the, there are ways to do trails that are have much less environmental impact. It's not that trails can't be there. But when you have numerous separate trails down a steep bank and they serve as rivers on a storm like this, it just carries everything right down and into the stream. And you know, we have fishermen here, and what, what it's going to turn into is that in 20 years or whatever, you'll be fishing only stock fish because when you're ruining the upstream habitat, um, that's where you're headed. And the other thing, this town floods, and when you eliminate the, the forest floor. It's all part of the big sponge that holds back the deluge 
when the real storms come. So when this town fills up again, think about where that water is coming from. You know, it's coming all the way up from Stowe, it's coming from the Mad River, but when it's allowed to just, you know, free flow down the bank, the embankments, it's not held back by what's out there, then you end up with more flood. So um, my major point uh, is just that it's a, from Lust Gardens and down, and also out by the, uh, the stream out front where the footbridge is. Um, it is class two wetlands, as I shared here in January. And as I told Steve Watts back uh, in speech a year ago, the same. Um, and David Brockingham actually worked on the, uh, around the wetlands permit that was done <clears throat> that identified the class two wetlands uh, three years ago. So, um, but one and two and 18 will be as wet in the morning as when the frost went out again. And the bigger picture is all it means is degradation of the habitat uh, as all that water moves to the river. So we continue as a town to be out of compliance with uh, wetlands regulations. And uh, I've made the point before, but I'm, I'll just make it again. Um, that there are better ways to do things and uh, turn a blind eye, then you're going to lose the resource. And that's, that's uh, what we're in the process of. So I just want to share that. Any questions from the select board members? Any idea where we are uh, uh, with the study for that area and the, the ice rink? Um, the I, I don't think, I think, well, Steve could probably answer that sure. best sure. because. On the rec, on the rec study, do you know where we're at? Right, Mike. Sure. So we received two proposals uh, last Friday. Uh, we'll be evaluating those, and we'll be bringing back a recommendation to you at your uh, your next meeting, your first meeting in June. And um, yeah, the natural resource issues are going to be addressed in that study. They will be addressed. That's correct. That's part of the study is to look at the natural. The study resources. will. The study will give us a list of the scope that there'll be. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you some information prior to your, your meeting, first meeting in June. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right, that's All right. it, Tom. I, I think that's where we really have to go is have people in the study who, I'm not saying me and you know a little bit about the, this stuff, but again, hopefully the experts are going to be, be able to point out. And you're right, we don't want to lose that resource. It's really critical. Yeah, there's a lot of experts that are interested now. So yep, you have people, you know, threatened and endangered species folks from uh the Department of uh Agency of Natural Resources. And I'm sure they'll comment on whoever the rec study people will probably be in touch with those folks because that's that's the stuff they deal with. All right. Thanks Thanks. for bringing that up again and yeah, we'll keep you. on trying to cut that. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Any anyone else from the public have anything to uh, bring forward? Are you folks able to hear me yet? Yes, yes. yes. You know, Bill, you can now, Bill. All right, good. How's everyone? Sorry to be. I've I've heard everything. I just um, I'm in now, and you can hear me. So I've had a little success with something today, anyway. So <laughs> carry on, Mike. Thank you. We're hoping you're feeling better. Well, I'm hoping I am too, but it's a slow slog. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, next item. Tree committee in interview, Erica Fuller, is she here? She is on oh. Zoom. Okay. Yes, good evening. Hi, Erica. Hi. And if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, why you want to be on the, uh, the committee and um, what, you, what you could add. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Erica Fuller. I'm a resident here in Waterbury. I've resided here for about three years. I grew up in Underhill, Vermont. Um, and I attended last month's tree committee meeting um, as I was curious to learn a little bit more about what they're working on. And I was, first of all, just really, really um, impressed by how welcoming the group was, Steve and, and the other members um, really enjoyed being able to participate and understand um, a little, little bit of what is happening on the tree committee with some of the natural spaces throughout the town and some of the planting that's happening this season, uh, this summer rather. Um, 
I have some service experience. I've, I've done a lot of service throughout my time and I really enjoy volunteering, which is why I wanna get a little bit more involved in the Waterbury community. Um, and this is a way where I think that I can benefit um, in learning a little bit more about tree management, invasive species here in town um, and other um, issues and progress that we can make as a town related to our trees. Um, so I think that I can benefit, but also I hope to bring a, a just general curiosity and excitement to be involved. Um, I love doing hands-on work and it sounds like this group gets out and gets their hands dirty from time to time. So um, that's why I'm interested and that's why I'm hoping to be considered in joining the committee. Thank you. Questions from the board. I'll just make a comment. It's always great to have new volunteers because <laughs> there's never enough of them. Do you have, Erica, do you have any technical background in civiculture, you know, either coursework or uh, practical, you know, in the field kind of work? Or it sounds like you like volunteering, which is, as Chris said, is a very critical thing. We always want people to roll up their sleeve, but in specific, that, that whole civiculture tree, tree management area, do you have any ex specific experience in that? Yeah, I appreciate the, the question. I do not have any formal education in environmental studies or anything in that realm. I'm just an outdoor enthusiast that wants to become more educated through service. Thank you. So Mike, while we're, while we're on this subject, uh, I've got a question for Steve, if you can answer it. Um, somebody asked me the other day about the cemetery, cemetery up in Waterbury Center and the fence being down, wanted to know when it was gonna go up. And I suggested to them that the reason it might be down still is because there's some possible tree planting that's gonna happen up there. Is that not the case or? Is this the Maple you know, Street Cemetery? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I think the cemetery commissioners decided that uh, the cemetery would be a lot more attractive. Bill can probably speak to this better than I, but uh, would be a lot more attractive without the fence, uh, the tree planting. Um, we may do some additional tree planting. We've done a lot over the last several years there. So, um, but uh, that's all I really know in terms of fence. Uh, so the fence came down because they just felt it would be nicer without it. Be more attractive, that's my understanding. Okay, well, I have my answer now. <laughs> yeah, uh, as Erica mentioned, she um, met with us. Uh, she's a volunteer professional. I don't know if you wanna tell them about any of your experience there, Erica, but uh, I was totally impressed. And sure. Very service oriented. <laughs> Sure. So my day job is I work with the American Red Cross. I'm a volunteer recruitment specialist for Vermont and New Hampshire. So I recruit volunteers. So that's, you know, something I'm willing to bring to the table. If we are looking for more volunteers within town government, I'd be happy to collaborate to um, support in some of that marketing uh, that goes along with volunteer recruitment as well, because that is my that's my expertise. And then a tree committee is what I'm hoping can be my my fun time. Any further questions from the board? This Mike, it's Bill. Bill. Can Bill you hear me? Bill, yeah, Bill. Bill. go ahead. Yeah. I, I just, I, I'm sorry, I guess I was muted and didn't know it, but I was trying to respond to Chris's question. A couple of years ago, the cemetery did have in its budget $25,000 to replace that chain link fence that was there. And uh, even though the budget passed, when, <clears throat> when they wanted to start moving forward the project, I suggested to them that I thought the cemetery would be much, uh, much more aesthetically pleasing without a fence at all. And certainly, you know, if we're going to have a fence, something other than a chain link fence, which I think is about the worst kind of fence you can have there. So they decided to see what it looked like after it was taken down. And once they did, uh, they liked it. Um, and then some of those trees were planted along there as well. Uh, they are in the process of trying to think about some entry. Um, they're thinking about some stonework or something else that might go in there. They're thinking about a way to 
potentially honor Jack Carter. But uh, anyway, the fence will not be returning there. Thank you, Bill. Any other questions from the board? It's a three-year term, Mike, ending. Three year, that's why I call it. Okay, so she's not fulfilling, a, a, she's not filling in for a term. It's no, a, this is an open position. Full term, okay. Um, I'll make a move to um, appoint Erica Fuller to the stated term and thank her for her interest in serving the community. I'll second it. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Welcome, welcome to service in the town, Erica. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. Yeah. Um, and on that topic, just Carla, would you mind sharing? We still have open board and committee positions, right? If anyone in the public is interested, I just yeah. want it. We never, I know we have a sheet up on the town website, but I just wanted to flag that publicly. Is that still the case? Yes. Great. So if anyone else wants to be on a board or committee on Waterbury BT, not <laughs> come. We love volunteers. Yes. So. Heart, heartbeat of the community. Okay, we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, consider the use of on-street parking, the railroad uh, station, Black Cat Cafe uh, Bakery. Marcy, you can speak to that. Sure. So, Mike, would you like me to introduce? Oh, Mark is here. Okay, sorry. No, I'm, yeah, I'm Fine. there. Um, so, I'm Mark Camillo. I'm the um, development director with Revitalizing Waterbury. We own the Waterbury train station, and this is Danielle Delisi. Delisi. She's the general manager for Black Cap uh, Coffee and Bakery, who we signed a lease with for the train station. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Very excited. I'm <laughs> thrilled to be for the location coming soon. So. Thank you for coming to Waterbury. Yes. So yeah, so they went through all the development review board um, meeting, I think, what was it, the, May, the 16th or so, the 20th? No, April it was 20th, 20th. April, <laughs> April 20th. And they're now requesting to use um, public parking to fill the on-site parking needed, which is 16 spots. 16 spots, yeah. Hey, the question that I have, I know from being on the development review board, this was a constant angst uh, because we always never really, you know, there were designated spaces for different businesses and as much as I'm very pro-business, but the spaces were never really there. And I know they're supposedly, the previous leasee had an agreement with Pilgrim Park for, for spaces. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems like that seems like the best course of action. I don't see how we could really designate a certain number of spaces that we really don't have. So are you looking, looking, excuse me, Mike. Are you looking for speaking additional? Mike. Yes. Mike, this is Bill. Yeah, hi Bill. So, you know, you, you just expressed your frustration from being on the DRB, but I would, I would yeah, very much so. <laughs> yeah, I would caution you against, however, you know, taking it to the extreme to say we're not going to uh, approve these spaces that we don't have. The fact of the matter is that uh, because of how the zoning bylaws are written, this has to be done. The trustees of the village had to do it for years and years and years, and then the village went away, and now it's up to the select board. And as we've talked about many times. And maybe it will be addressed in the, uh, the bylaws that the planning commission is working on. But there are many, many communities now everywhere, not only in Vermont, that say for commercial uses in, in, in downtowns, um, parking requirements are really passe. Uh, we're trying to move away from cars. We're trying to move towards pedestrians. So I think this is a perfunctory request just to be able to allow the new tenant to meet its requirements given the current bylaws. But, um, you know, the, the, um, the Green Mountain Coffee Cafe, when they went in there and when they were in business a few years ago, 
they had this uh, dispensation given to them by the by the trustees, and there was no, you know, there was there weren't 15 cars parked on top of each other. So I think you just have to do what you have to do. It's it's unfortunate, and maybe this will be changed when the bylaws get changed. But I don't think we should say we can't do this because if you can't do it, they can't open. Right, I understand that. But can we? And they ask that they try to get some additional parking in, in, you know, the darn tough, you know, whatever that the parking lot, whatever who owns the parking lot across the way. I, I will um, just say that when the Green Mountain Coffee Roaster space, they, they lease the 40, about 40 parking spots from Wayne Lamberton in that area, right. the Pilgrim Park. Their use was for a, a museum that could have up to 100 people. 100 person occupancy at one time. The use for this cafe bakery is a max of 45 seats, and that's during the summer using outdoor seating. So it's a it's a use that's a lot less demand. And I I mean, I know that there is a, a downtown parking ordinance, and I know it's very stressed. I would say it's more stressed in the main and so street area versus over by the park. So I would I don't know exactly how the allocation works out, but it seems like there's less stress on the public park spaces in that area. Bill's point is very well taken. You know, I understand where he's coming from. You know, I think the requirement for parking should go away. I think that's, you know, it's, it's archaic. It's not what's the current way downtowns are run. You know, it's, it's kind of free, free parking. <laughs> But as we see in our community, already parking is becoming, you know, more and more of an issue. You know, I'm more than willing. I, I would like to at least gear this to, yes, we'll approve the parking spaces with the contingency that they try to get some additional lease spaces from Wayne Lambert and, you know, Pilgrim Park. Oh, my, Mike, I really don't think you should put a contingency on it that they mm -hmm. have to get lease space it's, it's not a i say try not will big difference why what is the what is the the reason it's going to cost them money to do that and they're a startup business i think just okay let it go okay yeah, Mike, maybe i could I jump in here for a minute if i could uh, if i could just jump in here a minute so um <laughs> So I think, I think Bill's right. Um, this is a process that went through the development review board. Uh, they do have some on-site parking. They have five spaces, including two handicapped spaces. And uh, you know, those spaces are, are well utilized. Um, I think um, you know, they, they have a relationship with uh, the new owners of Pilgrim Park that is not an option, as I understand it, to, to have an agreement. So I think... Um, you know, all due respect, we, you know, we need to follow the lead of the development review board uh, that made this a condition of approval that they come to you and seek uh, the use of 16 on-site um, parking spaces. You know, there are some, uh, a fair number of downtown businesses that do have on-site parking. So, you know, we do try to, um, where possible, we, we work on managing the private spaces as well as the public spaces. But we are blessed with um, a, a really good supply of some public parking spaces. And um, so I think we, we, having those available to the businesses as a resource uh, is, is important. Uh, we added parking around the park back uh, probably 20 years ago for this very reason to help businesses out. So um, I would encourage you to, um, you know, to give the permission uh, to the, the owners and applicants to, to utilize the 16 on street uh, parking spaces. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I, uh, That's all I'm I have. Just, I was just curious as to how many parking spaces they actually had, how many additional they were looking for. I wasn't, you know, going to request any guidelines to actually establish more parking because I've finally come to the conclusion or conceded to the fact that here in Waterbury, especially after the reconstruction project took place, we lost a fairly significant number of parking spaces that we actually have more 
probably commercial business space than we do have available parking for it. So it's kind of take it at your own risk type deal and, and uh, with business owners. And so far we haven't, don't seem to have lost too many businesses because of lack of parking. It managed to shuffle their way around and share spaces enough so that uh, everybody seems to do all right. So I'm happy to approve this request. Uh, this is also more of a daytime um, business. And when we generally are running into issues is, is, is more like dinner time, evening time in terms of parking from what I've seen and heard. So I think, you know, it, it fits well in that regard. So also in support. Okay. Um, I support we us allocating them the full spaces, and I think the only other action for us is to take, take our aptly named parking lot. And as you said, Mike, now that we are the select board in the driver's seat, coordination on the parking ordinance yeah, moving forward is something on our never-ended to-do list. But I think <laughs> that is important. I think in the case of this particular applicant, we are implementing what is the best practice in planning, which is to not have parking minimums for commercial uses in a downtown. I will say to Chris's point, we did lose spaces. I think the number was like 11. I live on Main Street. I see much more use of the Main Street on-street parking post reconstruction project because the spaces are well delineated. It's well lit, particularly in the core between um, say Prohibition Pig and Village Market with the historic lampposts. Um, so it's very easy to see and folks are more willing to travel. So. Um, I support allocating the 16 spaces and recognizing it's an interim stopgap and we as a board need to work on the broader <laughs> policy so that this doesn't keep coming up. I appreciate that. So I I'll move that we approve for the on-street parking for the Black Cat Cafe in Big Bend. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Who seconded that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. When, when do you plan on opening? Hopefully August. August? Yes. Great. Gene, what will the hours be? Uh, 7 a.m. till 5 in the morning or 6 to the same. And is the board okay if Carla does add coordination on parking for bylaw relight like to our literally named parking lot? Yeah, I think. Okay. Thanks. What do you want to add? Um, coordination um, on parking ordinance and bylaw rewrite for our parking lot, I think. I assume that's a friendly amendment from a, to everyone. I don't think it needs a motion. I just right. I'm, I'm just saying. Just, oh, you want me to add that to the parking lot? Just, yeah, just on our official page. Right. Because it's called the parking lot. Parking ordinance. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and coordination by that. Okay, we'll move on to the 100 by 100 relay for Saturday, August the 13th. So, I got to sign off. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all thanks, for your Steve. community service. Thank, thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. So I guess I'll talk about this because Eric is not here. Eric, I, I forwarded you an email from Evan yep. Delucky requesting your approval for this year's Vermont's 100 relay. I think the last time they ran through Waterbury was in 2019. Um, but they had several years before that. The race is scheduled to take place on Saturday, August 13th. Green morning still and winding down the 100 to finish in Ludlow in the evening. Uh, anticipating approximately 200 runners that are all stretched out. Right. And I sent you the two relay legs that will be going through Waterbury. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Does anyone have any further comments? It seems pretty benign. It's, it's, it's one of our many road races that we seem to have going through Waterbury. And I get another positive step for tourism and uh, health and wellness. Yeah, this is a, a particularly low impact one because, as Carl said, they're all stretched out and uh, doing a relay and they barely seem to go by. So, uh, we're all moved to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And just for clarification, what are we approving? I know, like, the gravel grinder, we weren't actually approving our road closure. What are we approving? The use of it's the just a use of yeah. the road. Okay. 
Um, I totally support and will vote for it. I think it would be great at some point for us to have a checklist about what permissions are needed for what type of event. I just feel like personally, I know we have RW on the agenda for a special event permit later. I know we did the two races before. It varies depending on if there is a closure, if there isn't a closure. I don't know if there's a document I'm unaware of, but as a prospective event organizer, I think it would be nice to know I'm doing an event. Is it on a road? Does it need a closure? Right. Do I have alcohol? Do I have vendors? What are those check boxes I need to fill out? Just, you know, and I don't, Carla, if you differ, I, to me, it seems like <laughs> you, you keep getting incoming inquiries and kind of have to triage and maybe that's a fine system if that's working, but I can, I can discuss it with Bill. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, it, that's more just commentary, but again, no, I, I agree with you 100%. Bill, Bill and Carl can get together. Well, just, just so that I said, hey, I'm doing an event in Waterbury, All right? You know, it's actually in the woods. No one's selling anything and it's not a public property. You don't need a permit, or I, I need to close a road, and so we need to call VTrans or whatever the appropriate yeah, I don't know those depends terms. on what type of event it is, I think. Totally. And right. I currently don't have a checklist for each of these individual events. Right. Mm -hmm. Or overall, mm -hmm. I just don't know like what Most of the event coordinators know what they need to do okay like to get this whole packet from our company and have everything that they need I, you know i think i we we have there are certain things that we we have um you know if you need if we're going to have the um the car show or um you know if somebody's going to be renting a facility there's a lot of things that we do but these kind of things I mean, I don't know how many years in a row now, this 100 by 100 relay, it's really them telling us they're going to do it and making sure we don't have any issues. I think trying to make a checklist for every eventuality is just difficult. I, I think, you know, the gravel grinder, this event, and even the, um, even the um, Leaf Peepers half marathon is pretty straightforward they just come in and they tell us this is when we want to do it this is what we're going to do and i think we're able to be nimble enough to to figure it out i think trying to get a checklist for everything that may come down the line is is not necessary from my point of view but this will be the last one of these i have to talk about it immediately <laughs> i'm not going to worry I, about it i i understand your concern but i think it's as, as Bill said and Carla said, it's kind of a narrative on, you know, anything that doesn't require road closures or, or, or more significant kind of things. It's pretty much based upon the narrative if we have any, any concerns. And I don't think there's a XYZ on, on that. Or there never has been since I've been on the select board. Has, you know, Chris has been on longer. And it basically is asking permission in case there's road construction going on or you know, I, I did find peepers change their route a couple of years because of the answer construction, so they needed to discuss that. Yeah, no, I defer to you all as staff. I mean, I've sat in because someone was having a funeral in a park and wanted to have beer last minute, so they had to come in last minute. So I'm just, as a community member who might not permit an event all the time, I don't know where someone would find that info. What I'm hearing is folks should just email Carla, and so maybe we just need to have a sentence that says, if you have an event, check with Carla, and maybe most likely they don't need to come before us, but I think having that info would be. So I'm certainly not trying to create more process. I just want to make sure that folks can navigate it, but defer to you all as staff around not doing the checklist. Um, I don't have anything further. Thanks for that. Okay, if there's no further questions, move on to do we have a We have a motion on Saturday. Right, we didn't. If we could have a vote, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Being unanimous, motion passes. Next item was uh, revitalizing Waterbury special event permits for Arts Festival July 8th through 9th. Mark. Hi, I'm back again. Um, wasn't planning on speaking about this, but here I am, and Karen was trying to log on to Zoom, but she does not have power at her house currently. So hmm. I decided I'll stick around. Um, I don't know if there are any questions, but I'll try to answer the ones I can. Could you just tell us what is going to be closed or what the plan is for the event? Yeah, so the new location for the event is um, on the lawn in front of P5 in Pilgrim Park. That's the leftmost building, building if you're 
on the north, you know, the ones with the flagpoles. Yes, yeah. uh -huh. the only one that has the, the next size, uh, nice plot of, uh, you know, lawn from the south side of the building. Mm -hmm. um, the only section that will be a road that will be closed is um, the little part on what is that? Elder Street? Batch Elder? No, it's. Yeah, it's yeah, just the little section on Railroad Street where you see those two, um, the two red barriers. Red barriers. That's the only part that will be closed during the time of the event. And then, and the traffic will follow we'll the blue arrows there. The building. Okay. Will be a similar event. They'll have music and yeah, Friday food will, and stuff. And beer. Friday will be the block party to the beer garden, and uh, Griff will be playing as the main event. And then Saturday during the day, they'll have different kind of performing arts on the stage as well as the artist vendors around the area. So no change other than not being on Stone Street any longer. Yeah, that's the main change. Yeah. Will you have access to parking in that? I believe it will be there is use um, during in the part of park parking for the event. Yes. So this is the first year of this change. Right? Yes. Yeah, right. It, 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 didn't have, it wasn't because the COVID <laughs> it hasn't happened for for so well, it wasn't it happened. Sure. It happened. Well, it happened. It happened last year, but I don't know. There's been a lot of changes degree. in tent code on on uh, the supports they need for putting it on streets. Like, I don't, I don't know if anybody was at the event last year, but they brought in these huge jersey barriers for the stage coach, uh, the stage tent, and the other pre tented area. And it made the event seem a lot smaller and got in the way, caused issues for safety and yeah. getting fire trucks through the street and stuff like that. Well, in order to anchor the tents down, probably. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Um, are you planning to do outreach to neighbors in the area? I know that's been part of the event in the past. Um, I would I would think that Karen would keep up with that kind of um, work that she had done in the years past. Mm -hmm. I know she had a long talk and many walkthroughs with Wayne to make sure that it was allowed at this area, of course, because it's uh, private property. So would there be something on like front porch forum and whatever roundabout about where the road closures might, might be so yeah. people will know? Mm -hmm. Be, yeah, and that probably less as I'm now reflecting on having done some of that door knocking myself during my <laughs> RW staffer days. Um, there's certainly many more residences directly abutting where it was on Snow Street, as exactly. opposed to this location, and which is industry. yeah, more industrial, so um, probably fewer potential resident right. Any other questions? Danny, you all set? Danny, any, any questions? You're good, thanks. Do I have a motion to uh, approve the uh, special event permit for the Arts Fest? You got one. Thank you. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? They're always looking for volunteers. I spent 15 <laughs> hours last week hanging out with yeah. a brand new Mark, uh, running around taking out trash. So uh, stay I'm tuned. Volunteers are in there again this year, so the more I have, the less I have today. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll still have to do a lot. Don't worry. Subscribe yeah. to the RW newsletter on their website. And hey, sure volunteering is always good. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's no further uh, comments, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? There being none, motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. And the last um, item is an update on the municipal manager's search. Uh, give you a little update. We had a, a search committee uh, met on May the 9th uh, in attendance for, it was myself and Danny for the select board. Uh, Lucky Sayo substituted for uh, uh, Natalie Sherman, Skip Flanders, and Maroney Minter of, uh, who was a library commissioner. Uh, we basically, Elected at the meeting, elected Skip Flanders as chair of the committee. We also elected Natalie Sherman as uh, the secretary for the committee. And uh, I wound up, because Natalie wasn't in, in, in attendance, I took a uh, uh, meeting uh, minutes for the last meeting. Uh, we 
reviewed, there was a question, questionnaire of questions from the, cons the consultant from VLCT, Rick McGuire, uh, from EFUD and the select board. At that point, Rick had just seen the answers and most of them were self-explanatory, but a lot of them needed further uh, details from especially the town manager, su su such as what a prospective uh, range of salaries, what are, um, you know, some of the features of the community, what, what we want to highlight, uh, job descriptions, et cetera, those things we need to put together with, with, with Bill. And I know I talked about meeting with him, but Bill just recently after he came back has been ill. Uh, that has yet to happen. Um, we reviewed the rev revised timeline. Initially, the consultant had a hiring up till in, in December of this year. We felt that was insufficient. And we had them ratchet back the timeline to meet the uh, November 1st hiring. And the consultant felt that was uh, very doable. Uh, he also mentioned such things as reference and background checks take way longer than you expect them to do. You know, he said that process might take about two to three weeks. Uh, two to three candidates would be in the final in interviews. The final interview process is lengthy as it includes input from staff in the community. I know there's been a lot of buzz. I know probably some of you have gotten some of the emails about, you know, this person and that person, um, you know, wanted to be on the search committee as of what we've determined. And Danny kind of jump in any time uh, if you have anything to add, uh, we felt at least the best thing to keep the committee down to a reasonable level was to keep it at that five per five member level, but add input from the community in other ways and add input also from staff. You know, they could be part of, you know, you know, when we have candidates in tours, et cetera, even before that we could get, and again, all the public is invited to any of the uh, selection committee meetings. At the first selection committee meeting, I was surprised. I thought we would see a few more members. We really didn't see you know, any people on, on, on Zoom because they are a subject to open meeting laws and we are attending. Uh, first round, you know, the review of the first round is looking at August 1st to 15th. Uh, September 15th to the 27th would be a screening of applicants. Uh, there would also be, he talked about uh, August the 22nd where the first advertisements would be placed in, in, in the paper. And he recommended to not add, go to advertisement too early because you lose a lot of people in the process. You want, you know, hot commodities because people are gonna look for other jobs and such. And, you know, if, if you're advertising too early, you may lose those people. He also recommended a pay raise should be like 20% between high to low. And again, as we said, we're going to consult with Bill on his possible salary recommendations on what we're looking for. You know, again, we'll probably offer a little bit less for people with less experience, more if someone has significant experience. Uh, the part and a lot of people have been concerned that with the process is moving too slow. The consultant didn't seem that it wasn't. He said, you need to have suitable time up front to compile information about the community, compile information. So when you go to advertising, you have a good solid base, you know, to start seeking people. Uh, we talked about, we wanted the, uh, process to be gender, gender neutral in its process. And uh, Rick McGuire, the consultant, needs information to the questions no later than early August. So the thing that we need up front to get started with is starting on the Waterbury community profile, because that's going to be essential when we get out and in in, in you advertise to tell people a little bit about the community. And that's not just as easy as 
some folks would say. I know he's uh, sent to us a sample of Norwich's uh, community profile. I think also, didn't he do um, Williston as well, Danny? That's what I was going to ask you because he said he was going to, but I don't think I saw that. So that's why I, I was going to ask you that. I was going to yeah. say, I don't know if I missed that. No, I think I he, he, he may not have I'm sent saying. it. So we might, um, let's see. Oh, no. Uh, no, he sent the Williston, I think, job description, not All the right. sample community right. profile. And you would think he would know that because he was a town manager in, 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 in Williston. So, uh, so this, this isn't going to be like a tourist brochure, right? It's going to no. give both sides of the, of the coin. When it comes no, but we want, you know, people who are going to know, they want to know a little bit about Waterbury. We may not have candidates who are from Duxbury, from Burlington. We might have candidates from Hartford, Connecticut. We don't know where they're going to come from and they don't know as no, much. What I'm talking about is, it's, you know, when you're talking about the community, it needs to include all aspects of the community. Just right. Like, not the yeah. highlights. You know, we can so forward you the um, example from Norwich for the whole board. Um, no, this is like a six page document, like really broken down. Um, so that that should be helpful. And then I think Skip or um, Mike, I think we should follow up and ask him for the Williston example. I think it would be helpful to have more than one. Just so, so the applicants will get a, a, a clear picture of the community as they can, right? Right. Thank you. We also asked him about uh, fringe benefits for town managers, and hopefully we're going to get from B BLCP kind of like what a range of uh, fringe benefits are for different town managers from around the state. So we have some sort of guidance on what we might or might not want to offer, you know, prospective candidates. Uh, question was coming up about the uh, town car. Again, we got rid of the town car. Uh, and basically, Bill felt it wasn't necessary. But again, some candidates may look at some sort of, a, you know, a vehicle or something to get around. But I don't, I don't think that's probably going to be any offering unless, you know, there, there's some real strong reason to provide a, you know, vehicle. I would think we would go with some more of an allowance for mileage, et cetera. Uh, the profile uh, Rick wanted to be completed by uh, the middle of uh, July the 15th and we also want to address the top issues facing the community and we want to keep it at a relative minimum looking at probably three to four you know we we have probably many issues in Waterbury but he wanted to say keep it to the three to five real important issues you know that that we have within the community just yeah. in terms of the profile, I want to flag and Carla raised this before. Obviously, we have all of the done by revitalizing water right about under the brand discover water right for the shiny touristy because we need a little bit of shiny touristy. Right. Um, and then we also obviously can gather demographic data. I do that all the time for it. And then also just wanted to flag four top issues in the like we also have a number of different plans, being the planning enthusiast. So we have a town planning, How economic development, strategic yeah. plan. So just to say those are resources. Obviously, I understand the committee will probably put its own spin on things. And certainly some of those have not been updated in several years, but just wanted to flag all of those things as resources. Yep. Uh, there's also, there is some competition going on. He mentioned that Westminster, Barry City, Barrytown, Brighton, Townell, Essex Junction are all seeking uh, town managers. So the good candidates are gonna, you know, they have they have options, so we may have to sharpen our pencil to, you know, get a potentially good applicant. I would think Waterbury would beat out all the rest. <laughs> I I do too. I think there's a lot of things that why Waterbury would, would be more attractive under a lot of those communities. But some of them, you know, again, some of the more rural places they may have some attraction, but the size and whatnot probably doesn't justify the higher level salaries, but some people might like living in a more rural community of water. For me, it brings to, to mind two questions. One, how many towns are actually moving forward with a managerial system or are they just replacing uh, the managers that they are losing? And if all these towns that you just mentioned mm. are managerial towns already, and those managers are retiring as Bill is, 
to me, it says it throws up a red flag and asks the begs the question as to why they're all getting done at the same time. Is it just coincident that their tenure is running out, you know, or are they just, you know, just to, know, just to why, answer that why, real briefly, turnover, you know? all of them, with the exception of Essex Junction, were already <laughs> town manager places. The only reason why town Essex Junction is on there because they just recently split. It's new city. So it's a it's a, it's a new entity. So they they and again Essex Junction is bigger than we we are. As to your question, I think it's just where you're seeing in a lot of state government and whatnot, the aging of the workforce. People are getting toward retirement age. Bill's an example. You're seeing a lot of people, you know, I'm sure Bill could say in some of his, you know, you know, town manager association meetings. You probably see more gray hair than 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 young kids, and I think it's just a natural turnover. We saw that in the USDA app. We saw a flipping over our staff. I think a lot of you know businesses and governmental entities are just seeing that happen now, and it's just a turnover. So I don't know why. Hey, Bill, do you have any comments on that? Um, no, I. Some of the towns that you just mentioned, I hadn't heard about yet. Uh, you know, there's there's a, a a wide range of reasons. I'm sure um, there's a number of people that are, you know, of about my age that uh, you know, we're the baby boomer generation, and you know, it's kind of um, getting time for the ones of us that are even toward the end of the baby boomer generation to be moving into these times. Um, my guess is that for some of the same reasons, like for me, um, you know, <laughs> uh, it's been a, it's been a pretty stressful couple of years with, with COVID. Uh, in my case, you know, um, it's really since the flood in 2011, uh, we've just been going straight out, great guns, uh, all kinds of reconstruction and building. And I, I just feel that I've kind of um, done what I can do and, and I don't have other large, big projects really in me at this point. So for me, it's, it's time to, to move on. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a challenge. And I think, I think part of it is just this whole you know, it's been referred to a couple of times in the media as the great resignation and the great retirement. And those are both COVID related things. So I, I'm not sure, but that's what it is. Me be more blunt, I was wondering, you know, is there a level of frustration with a lot of these people that are just set up, I'm, I can't do it no more, I'm done. Uh, sure. well, that's more that off, you know? There's, there may be some of that, but there, there, there'll be people out there, you know, there's plenty of people out there looking for, um, to have important jobs that are meaningful, that, uh, they feel that they can be making a difference. And, and I'm hopeful that you'll be able to, to find somebody who's, you know, one of those people looking for, for a job like this. I think it's a great opportunity. It's a great community got a lot of things going for us here and uh, you know there's always challenges and and the next people in line are up for the next challenges i hope thanks bill uh the only other last thing that i did want to bring up is that uh they the consultant said we should starting getting together a draft employment agreement. I know Bill doesn't have an employment agreement. <coughs> he recommended to have an, a, like not the, necessarily a town attorney, but an a, attorney that's skilled in employment law, you know, review the review, whatever document that we do have. And, and I think Rick was going to get uh, some examples of draft employment agreements and at least it would be a good start. And then, you know, have an attorney who, you know, is, you know, has the skills to do that, you know, craft something, you know, that would work. Anything I've missed, Danny? 
I don't think so. I think you're just bringing up a couple of things for me is maybe circling back with Rick, because I don't think we've seen that example yet. Um, so it would be good maybe to reach out and touch base with him. Um, and then the other thing to note is we wouldn't be meeting again as a full group with Rick until mid to late June. Um, but I can't remember, Mike, did we talk about meeting without yeah, we, Rick? We, we, we had uh, tentative meetings with Rick 616 to 623. And, you know, with, you know, I want to kind of speak to Bill a little bit first, but I was hoping to reach out with Skip and, you know, maybe just having the committee meet, you know, somewhat, you know, we just don't want to leave it, you know, hanging there, you know, keep on the momentum yeah. on, of, of what we had for a moment a week ago. The other suggestion I would make is, you know, there are a few action items hanging in the air that feel like, oh, we can easily gather X, Y, and Z, but I just think it could be super helpful to clarify who's responsible for what, like you mentioned, you would talk to Bill particularly to get rolling with like salary and job description, um, but in terms of the community profile, just because the information's there doesn't, we don't have someone who's who's working on it. So that might be something to think about um, and uh, decide who's gonna get, get to work on that. Have job assignments. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, you just mentioned the job description. Uh, is that something that uh, Bill's going to be working on, or has that been decided? Yeah, we talked about at least you know once I meet with Bill, once he's feeling better again, mm -hmm. that we would at least you know work on you know you know he he would best know what kind of is in his okay. job responsibility. Right now, there is no job description. So and those we do that. have examples for. I think he sent us Norwich and Williston for um, those examples. So at least there's sort of something to oh, work well, off of. Okay. Any other questions? I discard my minutes are on the Slackboard page. Took the minutes. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else needs some? Yeah, we're posting the agendas on the uh, minutes on the software page. Thank you. Okay. There be uh, all the select board items we have. We have. Uh, we do have a, a, a request to uh, go into executive session. So, can someone make a motion? Make a motion. I'll move to go into executive session to deal with personnel issues. Thank you. We have a second. And like Bill or inviting Bill. And Bill's included. Yep. Can you invite me too for a few minutes? Yep. Uh, yep. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm.